Over the weekend, I went to go and see Insidious, The Red Door, and I've been a fan of the series since 2010 when the first one came out. So here are my thoughts on Insidious, The Red Door. Now this is the fifth movie in the franchise, and that is not uncommon, especially in horror movies, to where if they have a hit, they just run with it until it is dead. I got you! Now is this the case for the Red Door? Yes and no. The Red Door gets a lot of things right, especially with the horror. There are a ton of jump scares in this movie, and a lot of them are very effective. I'm gonna prank my dad. <laughs> Patrick Wilson, who actually plays the lead in the movie, Josh Lambert, this is his first movie directing. And I have to say, he did a lot of things right. For example, there's a scene in the beginning of the movie where you see Josh sitting in his car, and the focus is on Josh, but the camera is wide and you can see in the background. It's a very long, drawn out scene, but you start to slowly see something forming in the background, getting closer and closer and closer to the car, and it works really well to build up the tension. There are tons of other techniques that Wilson uses to build up the tension, to build up the horror and the scares, but I don't want to give away too much because I want you to be surprised when you see it. And honestly, that is the best part about the movie. The jump scares, the horror, and the atmosphere. Unfortunately, there is one huge drawback to the movie, and that's the plot. The film is focused on Josh and Dalton starting to remember what happened to them in the first and second Insidious movies. And that's it. That's the story. The problem with that storyline is that it takes up 90% of the actual runtime of the movie. If you've seen the first two movies, you already know what happened to them. So it's just a very slow, drawn out recap of the first two movies. And the other big issue is that after that whole time of them starting to remember and then they remember, and then we get to the climax of the movie, it wasn't a good payoff. Once Josh and Dalton remember what's going on, the movie goes way too fast, and it's over almost instantly. So the pacing of the movie, unfortunately, is another negative. When I went to go see the movie, I went with my buddy who has never seen an Insidious movie. I don't even know if he's seen the trailer for this one. And I asked him what he thought at the end of it because, you know, I've seen the other movies. I felt like it was really slow and drawn out because it's just retreading what we've already seen before. So he said that he actually liked the movie. He said the scares were good, the tension was good, but he did say that it was a little bit drawn out and it did move very quickly at the end as well. So the same criticisms are there, but I do think he liked it a little bit more not being familiar with the franchise than I did after seeing the first couple movies. Insidious the Red Door is a solid horror movie, which is pretty impressive considering this is Patrick Wilson's first movie that he's directing. If you like jump scares, if you like the past movies with the creepy atmosphere, you're gonna like the movie. Now, if you're a fan of the franchise and you've seen the last four movies, this one's going to be a very slow burn for you, unfortunately, because it just recaps what's happened in the past. Even though it's got great jump scares, this isn't a movie that I would particularly say, hey, you need to go see this movie right now. This is something special, just like the first movie was. But this is one that you should watch whenever you get a chance. Thank you all for watching my review of Insidious the Red Door. If you liked the video, please click that like button and let me know down in the comment section if you liked the movie or what your favorite movie in the Insidious franchise is. Also remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel for movie news, reviews, rankings, recaps, and more. Until next time everybody, see you later.